Welcome to the uh, parts per and percentage uh, concentration lesson. Um, so these um, parts, like examples of parts per, like parts per million, parts per billion, uh, you know, 40% of this alcohol and so forth. Um, these are typical examples of um, concentrations um, that are used uh, with consumer products. Um, so we're going to look at things like, you know, like water has um, units measured in parts per million, like this, the different components of the bottled water and, um, you know, just different household uh, pr products have percentage uh, concentrations as well. Okay, um, so this is our, I guess, our a second lesson really into looking at concentration. We've already looked at the first one, which was amount concentration. Um, so again, this is based on, you know, counting up how many moles you have per volume. So how many moles of a solute that you have per volume. But in the end, when we're looking at the concentration of, um, you know, regardless of what units we're using, we're always looking at the, you know, how much solute you have compared to how much volume um, you have and so forth. Okay, so how much solute to how much, um, it doesn't even have to be volume, sorry, um, just like how much of the solution you have overall. So that's what um, is kind of the backbone of all the concentration um, uh, questions that we're going to do in this unit, okay? Um, so again, last day we looked at moles and then <clears throat> liters, moles per liter, right? Uh, today we're going to look at some other uh, types of units here, okay? But just keep in mind that this is the general idea for concentration. How much of the solute, remember that's the stuff that you have less of, and then you're going to dump it into a solvent, um, and then you make a solution. So then we're comparing it to how much of the total solution that we have, okay? All right, um, the two types of concentrations that we will look at today are percentage composition and um, when we have really, really low concentrations. So uh, we're gonna use this parts per type of uh, concentration. So there are three types of percentage compositions we'll look at, okay? So weight, so it's like volume, volume, um, this, I like to think of this as mass volume, but uh, chemists use the word weight. And then this is mass mass or weight weight volume. So um, anyway, they use weight. So they use W slash W and W slash V, etc. So uh, here's an example of, um, here we have a water bottle and if you look at the, the um, um, just the contents of it, um, they'll have a little box here saying, you know, these are all the elements that are, are, you know, it's not completely pure water. They tried their best to clean it and so forth, but there's still going to be some elements uh, and some compounds uh, in this water, okay? Um, so they're just, they'll show you here these numbers and so forth. Um, so again, it's a very, very small quantity that um, if you were to write, um, you know, out the actual amount, uh, I guess in moles or um, and grams or whatever, it, it would be a really tiny number. So you would be going on and writing zero, 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 you know, um, five, right? And to put a number that tiny with that many zeros on um, the side of a, a small label of the water bottle would be very annoying for the, you know, the manufacturers and so forth. So that's why they report things in parts per million. Okay, so like for example here, the sodium is 42 parts per million. So if I were to convert that to mole per liter, which is the unit we've been studying, um, the number would come out like this. So to actually have that number on here, plus you know all the other elements, it would take up a lot of space and it would be annoying uh, for the, the supplier. So um, that's why they have this alternate way of reporting um, you know, tiny, tiny concentrations um, just so it's a little more convenient to report, okay? Okay, so we're going to move on into percentage concentration now. Uh, many consumer goods uh, that you, you know, have at home um, use this type of concentration to describe, uh, you know, the, the contents that are um, in the, uh, the material here. Um, so, um, like, for example, here, um, acne cream, right? So, um, they'll say 5%, right, so of benzoyl peroxide. So basically of, you know, if there was um, uh, 100 grams, okay, so if it was in grams, 5 grams of it would be the benzoyl peroxide. The rest of it is, you know, the other, you know, water and what are, you know, other things that they need to have in there to get a gel to form, okay? Um, and then here we have other examples like vinegar, um, I had, I, I got this one here, but um, it's hard to see. It says 5% acidity. So I, I grabbed another one where I zoomed in. It says 
5% acetic acid. So acetic acid is the um, IUPAC, I guess, or uh, it's like the classical way of naming um, a vinegar, okay? So um, so it's the acetate, uh, you know, polyatomic ion um, with hydrogen. And uh, so anyway, so it's a 5% acetic acid uh, per volume. So say if this vinegar was made up of water and um, so like altogether, if there was a hundred milliliters of it, five milliliters of um, this hundred mil sample is acetic acid. So they dump it in, mix it up and make the vinegar. Okay. So, um, and then another one here, like um, hydrogen peroxide you might have in uh, one of your cabinets in your bathroom. Uh, it's a 3%, okay, concentration here. So it's just saying there's, you know, out of a hundred, whatever the unit is, it could be volume or mass, three, like, so if you think of it as mass, three grams of it um, out of 100 grams is the actual um, hydrogen peroxide, okay? And then the rest is just, you know, watered down uh, to create the whole bottle here. Okay, so uh, so we're going to look at the different types of concentrations. Like I said above, there's uh, three of them. And um, again, it could be about volumes, it could be about the mass and so forth. But it's all, when it comes down to it, we are comparing how much solute there is compared to how much of the whole thing, the whole solution there is. Okay, so let's look at the first one here. Uh, the first one is uh, volume, volume. So just volume percentage, okay? So uh, we're taking, you know, so again, like say if we're looking at these examples, so say if I'm making peroxide, say I'm, I'm gonna take a certain volume of peroxide and then I'm gonna dump it into a solution of uh, water, say. Okay, so the um, first one, uh, volume is the solute the second one is the solution okay so again it's it's slash but think of it as like this divided by this so when you see the slash here this divided by this that's what's happening here okay so um, yeah so again we will use this to um, describe uh, where both the solute and the, the solution are liquids okay so here's um, some isopropyl alcohol um, so it's 50% by volume, so that means 50 milliliters, okay, um, out of the 100 milliliter sample, uh, 50 mils is the isopropyl alcohol, okay. So again, if you're going through and calculating the percentage, this is what they did. They went 50 divided by 100 times 100, so it's just like, you know, what percent did you get on your test, okay. And so there is the, con um, the concentration volume per volume um, equation, okay. All right, um, and then the next one here, the type, another type is a percentage weight by volume. So um, again, if you're a physics kid, uh, you, you know we're talking about mass here, mass per volume, but in chemistry they they use the word weight, okay? So, um, so this is weight per volume, percentage weight. So you just say percentage weight per volume, okay? Um, and then so examples of this will be like the hydrogen peroxide here, okay? Um, chlorine bleach. Um, so uh, they, yeah, so they'll say 6% uh, weight per volume. Okay, so that means, you know, they took the, um, uh, yeah, they massed out six grams and then they put it into a, a solution which is 100 milliliters and that's how you get the 6%. Okay, so again, you're using a mass value uh, divided by a volume vo uh, value to get this concentration. So again, uh, these look a little complex, but all it is is just, you know, sometimes you're going to go mass divided by volume. Sometimes you'll go volume divided by volume. Um, and this, in this case here, we're going to go mass divided by mass. Okay, so it's all about what part you have and what's the total that you have. Okay, so um, these are often used for mixtures of solids. Okay, um, and um, yeah, so mixtures of solids and uh, either liquids or solids, other solids. Okay. So here's some, like we were using a medication. So we looked at the cream up here. Okay, so solid, uh, mixing into, um, uh, yeah, some, to a liquid to make kind of a gel, okay? So um, so we have 5%, uh, that was the concentration. So all it is is you're taking uh, five grams of your benzyl peroxide and then, yeah, massing out uh, the rest of the material. Uh, so it's 100 grams, and then dividing it, and you get 5%.
Okay, so in the end, uh, all you're doing is if you're trying to find the uh, concentration today, you're just taking the solute, it's always at the top, and the solution's at the bottom. Okay, but the units could be different. It could be mass, it could be, but they say weight. Okay, uh, it can be a mass versus in volume, or it can be a volume volume. Okay, but the main thing, remember the solute, the one that there's less of, has to be at the top. Okay. All right, uh, so that's percentage concentration. So we'll get to some examples in a sec. Um, uh, then we are gonna, uh, before we do that though, we're gonna look at um, um, how do we go about describing something that has really, really low concentrations, um, you know, of the elements and so forth. Just like so, uh, uh, various medical fields and environmental fields will use um, these measurements. Like for example, if they're trying to test air quality, or they're trying to test, um, you know, water quality and so forth. Um, we're hoping that the water in the air doesn't have a, a ton of material in it, but um, so th that's why. Um, but still, even to have a little bit of pollutant in the air is bad for us. So um, they'll use the parts per uh, type of measurements and, and water, same thing. Hopefully it's not so polluted that they can't use these, but we're looking at slight amounts of different contaminants um, in the um, water. So uh, here are uh, examples of different measurements, like they'll say one part uh, ppm, ppm, so that stands for parts per million. So if you're trying to use an analogy, it's like one drop in a bath full of water, okay, or 30 seconds out of a year. Uh, parts per billion, so it's like you are one in a million. That's what this is. Think of it that way. You are one in a million, okay, one part per million. In this one here, it's billion, one part per billion, okay? So it's even a tinier amount, okay? So three sec seconds out of a century or one drop in 250 barrels of water, okay? Uh, and then there's trillion, one part per trillion. So one drop in 20 Olympic-sized pools or three seconds out of 100,000 years, okay? So, so as we go along, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So I, I grabbed some diagrams. Um, they like to measure, you know, different air particles. Uh, with uh, parts per concentration. So like carbon dioxide, they like to use parts per million. Um, so here is um, here are some diagrams on kind of, um, yeah, just how much carbon dioxide that they're measuring in the air. So um, here, this looks quite drastic, um, but uh, it's like about, you know, 100 parts per million jump since, um, I guess like think of it as when your parents were born to where we are now, okay, so this just been this gr uh, gradual increase, uh, and yeah, some people would say not gradual, but, um, and uh, so yeah, that, they'd like to measure carbon dioxide that way, and so yes, this is why they're concerned if you're looking at an overall, over a huge period of time, um, generally the carbon dioxide um, the concentration has been kind of up and down, but it's been steady, but then within like the last, I don't know, bit, this is us now, um, it's shot up and we're, it's up here now. So it's quite a huge difference. So um, yeah, the carbon dioxide concentration is increasing a lot faster than what naturally occurs with uh, just with the different cycles and the seasons and so forth. So yeah, so it's a, something to be concerned about. But anyway, so that's why when you are listening to reports about carbon dioxide, you'll find that they uh, like to report them in parts per million. And now you can understand, um, yeah, like, you're going to do some questions today where you're going to practice this. So, um, again, it is still, um, you know, it's considered to be a very low concentration, but still a little change is a big change um, that can affect um, a lot of things on Earth and so forth, okay? All right. Uh, anyway, you can look into that some more on your own, um, but I just want to go in and um, now look at the different... Um, uh, yeah, uh, examples now, but here is a summary table of everything we've covered. So in the end, if you look at all these formulas, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many formulas. But uh, in the end, all it is, is it's always the solutes at the top. Okay, so whatever that tiny amount that you're mixing in, and then the total is at the bottom, whatever the total is. So if it's a volume volume question, this is what you do. Um, if it's a mass volume, mass mass, and then when you get to these parts per million billion questions, they're always mass mass. Okay, so that's all you're doing here. And then you're multiplying by 100 to get percentage. Um, when it's parts per million, billion, trillion, you're going to be um, multiplying by uh, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 9, 10 to the 12 to get it into the millions. Okay, um, otherwise the, the number is going to be super, super tiny. Like I said, like on the side of the water bottle, it's going to be very, very tiny. So we got to kind of convert it 
into the millions here so that we can get a, a reasonable number like 42 that we can put on the side of a water bottle. Move on to some examples here. Um, I went ahead and made the video and then I realized I didn't like the order that the examples were in. So anyway, um, I'm just going to leave them labeled the number that they had on them. So if you're just wondering why when you're looking at the worksheet, why can't Miss Perry count? Um, it's just I had it a certain way and I didn't like the way it was, so I had to change it. But I did not want to go back and change all the videos. So anyway, this is why it's in this order, just in case you're wondering. Um, for those of you who are, are wondering what this, the density of water, why we're just converting it over. Um, uh, I, so back in, uh, hopefully in grade nine, grade, maybe grade 10, uh, you guys learned about the, just calculating the density of objects. So, um, you know, every, various objects had different numbers and so forth, but the density of water had um, a value of one gram per milliliter. So what this means is that it's for, for like, um, you know, for uh, you, think of it as if you have one gram of water, okay, um, you always compare it with one milliliter of water. So if you take one milliliter of water, so if you just had, I don't know, like a beaker or a flask, one milliliter of water, and you, you took the, the weight, the mass of it, it would be one gram. Okay, so we always found that it didn't matter, um, you know, it, even if you had like five grams of water. Okay, so if you had five grams of water and poured it into a container, you would end up with five milliliters. So it was always the same because in the end, when you um, yeah, so the when you calculate out the, the the density is one. So even if you had you know ten grams of water, if you filled it into a container and measured the volume, you would have ten milliliters of water. Okay, so that so since that's the case, every gram that you have. Is equal to whatever milliliter you have. So if you have five grams, you have ten. Sorry, five grams, you have five milliliters. If you have hundred grams, you have a hundred milliliters. So uh, that's what we're doing today. Is we're just assuming um, all of the substances that we're looking at, um, like their densities are slightly different, but uh, we're just going with just for the learning process. We're assuming everything has the same density as water, so that we can take the mass and convert it to milliliters whenever we need to um, to get to our, con uh, our uh, concentration values and so forth, okay? Okay, so we'll move on to example five. Uh, so we have a stop bath. Uh, it contains some acetic acid, again, that's vinegar, um, and uh, in a bottle, 500 milliliter bottle of solution. So what's the percentage uh, volume concentration of acetic acid here? All right, so let's write down what's given. Okay, um, if you're wondering right now what a stop bath is, it's, I don't know if you've seen those movies where people are developing pictures in the dark and so forth. It's one of those liquids that they put the paper into so that they can develop the, uh, the picture, okay? Um, anyway, you can look it up. All right, so uh, we have, so the stop bath contains 150 milliliters of the vinegar, acetic acid, um, and um, it's uh, from a bottle that's 500 milliliters in size, okay? So um, so if we know that there's 150 milliliters in this 500 milliliter bottle, we want to know the percent um, uh, concentration, per, uh, volume concentration. So in this case, it's a volume per volume concentration. Okay, so here's our plan. Uh, we are going through and um, we need to find the concentration. Um, and we have our solute over our solution. Oops, solute over our solution, right? Everything's always this uh, form. And then because it's a percentage, I know I need to multiply by 100%. Okay, so um, what you're doing here is that you need to actually find the concentration volume per volume. The solute is the volume, okay? So this is the volume divided by volume. So this is the acetic acid, that's the solute. And the whole bottle is the um, the total solution here, okay, and then we're multiplied by 100. So hopefully you're seeing here once you start plugging it in, oh, this is a nice easy one. I should have probably started with this example at the beginning, but anyway. Um, so 140 milliliters divided by 500 milliliters times 100, okay? So just divide those out. Multiply by 
uh, 100% uh, and you get 28%. Okay, volume per volume. All right, um, and again, we write volume for volume because we divided a volume by another volume. And I'm um, looking for the digits here, three digits, three digits, so I will write it as three digits dot zero, okay, point zero. All right, so there was our salt step right here, and here's our final statement. Okay, so a nice easy one. Um, so yeah, if you're just given the solute and solution volumes and you want to find the concentration, that's all you do. You put it in that same type of equation here. All right, so uh, here you want to get the keywords, the percentage by volume concentration. of acetic acid is 28% Oops. Um, volume per volume. Okay, don't forget the, the these units here. Okay, don't just put percent. Next example, um, we have, uh, so we just ignore the fact that the, this number is here. I'm actually gonna rearrange this handout so this will work. Um, anyway, so we have a silver ring. Uh, it has a mass of 12 grams altogether. It contains 11.1 uh, grams of pure silver. So the rest is something else. What is the percentage weight by weight concentration of silver in this ring? Okay, so again, concentration today and the other day as well. It's always about solute compared to the solution. And uh, we would normally, yeah, and then here it's percentage. So we're going to multiply by a percent. All right, so that's our plan. Um, to write it more specifically, we need to find a weight for weight concentration, weight by weight concentration, and the mass of the solute is the silver. And the mass of the total thing was the ring, okay? And then we're multiplying by 100. All right, so let's go through and solve this. So to find the concentration weight per weight, percent concentration, uh, we have a 11.1 gram over 12 gram sample times 100. And then multiply by 100% and you get most of this ring is silver, so a 92%, 92.5% percentage seems right, right? And uh, weight per weight, don't forget those units here, okay? All right, make our therefore statement. The, um, yeah, the percentage okay, so the percentage weight by weight uh, concentration of silver. is, oh, I didn't round up properly here. Oh, no, I did. Okay, so 92.5% weight per weight. All right. Okay, so um, I just wanted to bring this table back here. Uh, so we just completed uh, several um, percentage co uh, concentration examples. Um, again, uh, with the percentage concentrations, you can have, you know, volume or, or mass units or, you know, mass per mass units and so forth. So, uh, so that, that worked fine there. Um, I just wanted to point out before we head into the parts per type ones is that we always have to have a mass mass um, uh, numbers that we are stacking up here and then uh, calculating out. Okay, so just keep that in mind as we go forward here. All right, um, so let's write down what we have here. We have a 1.5 liter uh, sample of pool water containing this much chlorine. I determine the concentration of chlorine in parts per million. Okay, so uh, I've got our givens written out. So here is the volume of the sample, the pool water. That's 1.5 liters. We have the mass of the chlorine uh, that went into the pool water and we need to determine the concentration in parts per million. Okay, so here is our plan of attack here. So we have um, we have the um, you know the usual the concentration has something to do with the solute over the solution. 
okay? And then before when we have percentages, we say times 100%, right? But here, because it's parts per million, uh, we know, um, so like if you write out a million, this is a good way to remember it, so million has six zeros, okay? So we're gonna go times 10 to the six here. Okay, so that's a million. All right, so we're just converting it because when, when we take this uh, ratio here, it's going to be a super tiny number. So we just got to uh, convert it, bump it up so that uh, we can read out a, you know, a, a reasonable number. Okay. All right. Um, so if we're looking here now specifically, so this would be the concentration in parts per million. Um, this at the top here. Okay, so remember um, parts per million. Parts per concentrations need a mass, so we have a mass of 0.045 grams of the solute, so we're good there, okay? But um, we need a mass of the solution. So again, um, in this just in this lesson here, I, I want you to always assume that everything that we're looking at um, has the same density as water. So when we make the assumption that uh, you know the different solutions that we're studying has the same density as water we can make this conversion of grams to milliliters. So right now we have um, we have 1.5 milliliters, sorry, liters of the pool water. So we want to get it to milliliters so we can get it to grams. So I'm going to convert this to milliliters. Okay, so we're going to multiply by 1,000 here. Okay, so then we have it in liters. And then because of the assumption that the density is the same as a water, so then we can just write our volume is 1,500 grams. Okay, so we're going to put that in. And then multiply by 10 to the 6. Okay, so let's go through. Okay, so again, I'm just going to show you what number I get when I divide these out. I end up with this number here. Okay, so uh, when I divide this ratio, I get this number. And again, if you think about it, putting that on the side of a, a little water bottle label, that's going to be annoying, okay, to put all these zeros in. So that's why we're going to multiply by a million here to just kind of get it to a more reasonable number here. Okay, and it ends up being three, which is a nice number put on the side of the bottle. Okay, so we are looking at three parts per million. I'm looking at the digits here. I have two here, I have two there, so I need to add that zero. There I have two digits, and my units are parts per million. Okay, so again, there was like a little parts per million unit here hanging out that comes along. And so that's why when these grams cancel out, parts per million is still there. Okay, so that was our solving step. Now let's write our therefore uh, statement here. Okay, so we needed to find the concentration of the of the chlorine, right? Okay, so it's three parts per million. Here's the next one where uh, we have to find the final concentration when 125 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide is diluted to two liters. Okay, so this is kind of bringing back our dilutions from the other day. And now we're using not the mole per liter type concentrations, but the percentage uh, weight per volume concentration here. Um, so it still works the same. Okay, even if you had mole per liter or a new type of concentration percent, you know, weight per volume, um, you can still use the dilution um, uh, calculations the same way, okay? Uh, so again, one issue here is that we're not in the um, same units here, so we just need to, um, you know, it doesn't matter what units actually you work in, you just need to um, be in the same units, okay? Um, when you had mole per liter type concentration units, you had to be in liters, but here it doesn't matter. But we'll just change this to um, a liters anyway. Here. Okay, so divide by a thousand. And you get to there. Okay. All right, so let's go through and 
use our dilution formula. Okay, so again, um, I used to use C and D, but I think uh, a lot of you um, preferred the numbers here, so or whatever numbers that you or letters you want to use here, but it's fine. Okay, so we need to find the final concentration, so C2. So I'm going to again rearrange this. I'm going to move the V2 over there. Okay, so there is my formula. So I like rearranging formulas first. Um, but again, some people like to plug on all the numbers and then rearrange numbers instead of letters, okay? So whatever it works for you. All right, so now we're going to go through and um, add in all the different information that we know. So we know the initial concentration was 30%. Okay, weight per volume. And then we know the volume that we uh, used or had for the initial sample was 0.125 liters, and then we're going to divide by the new volume, which was 2 liters. Okay, and then we end up with 1.87875. Okay, and again, if we're looking at the different um, units here that cross out, those do cross out, and then that leaves this unit here. So percent weight per volume. So make sure to write that whole unit out, okay? All right, and we're going to look to see what to round to. Three digits here, three here, four here. So three digits. So the final concentration is point. Okay, so again, um, I want to keep that third value there, the third digit. I'm going to look at the next one. It's a five, so that means I got to round up. Okay, and then we get to wait to a ball. All right, our, uh, the final statement here, the uh, final concentration of hydrogen peroxide is 1.88% weight per volume. Okay, so in this case here, we took um, a stock solution that was 30%. So again, that's a very um, concentrated solution, uh, like the, the bottles that you, you or your parents would buy from the store, are usually about 3%, okay? So we're taking a stock solution, we're diluting it down, and uh, we're using a 1.88% um, concentrated solution now of hydrogen peroxide instead in our experiment. Okay, so here's the first example. Uh, we have <clears throat> the concentration of ethanol in a 750 milliliter bottle of wine is 13.5% volume per volume. Uh, assuming that the wine has the same density of water, so we're going to assume that all the way through, assuming the sample that we're looking at is the same density as water, um, calculate the volume of ethanol, okay, in the bottle. So um, we're going to write down what we have. So uh, we know the concentration of this uh, uh, of ethanol in this bottle. Uh, we know, uh, you know, the volume of this bottle. So I wanted to know, um, you know, what volume of ethanol was added. Okay. So again, like we're, I don't know, looking at a bottle here. Uh, so we already know the concentration. We already know the concentration. We know, um, you know, the size of the bottle and how much of the contents we have. We wanted, we want to, have to figure out though how much ethanol was dumped in uh, to make this mixture, okay? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're, we're trying to figure out, um, so again, remember when we're looking at concentration, if we're trying to find the concentration, it's always something about the solute, okay, over the total, okay, so the solution, okay? And then if it's percent, uh, we're gonna multiply by 100, but if it's, you know, parts per million, then we're gonna go 10 to the six, for parts per million, um, 10 to the 9 for a billion, oops, billion, and then 10 to the 12 for trillion. Okay, so but everything else, this part here is the same for all the different types of um, uh, concentrations that we're going to look at today. So again, um, in this case here, um, I'm telling you already the answer, the concentration, I'm telling you the size, you need to figure out the uh, how much of the solute of ethanol you added in. So here's our plan. So again, in general, this is our formula, right? Solute over solution, like that. So 
Um, so hopefully you see here, you have the total solution, you have the concentration, but you need the solute. So I'm just going to rearrange this equation. And again, uh, because we're dealing with percent, we're, we have this 100% here as well. Okay, so what you're going to do here is let's move, sorry, the 100 first. Okay, let's move the 100 over here. So see, it's being multiplied by 100. So we're going to take our concentration and divide by 100. And that makes sense. We don't, we don't use uh, percentages. We always change it to a decimal. Okay, so we're dividing it by 100. And then you end up with solute over solution. Okay, and again, our goal is we are trying to find the solute amount here. Okay, so I'm going to boot the solution over here as well. Okay. So right now it's divided, so I'm going to multiply it onto the other side. So then it'll be concentration times um, uh, solution. So in this case here, since we're using volume, it's volume, volume. Okay, so uh, the volume of the solution will be multiplied by the concentration, and then we're going to divide it by 100. Okay, and that's what's going to get us the volume of the solute. So that's what you're doing today. You're just kind of rearranging this general equation to find, you know, you might need to find the concentration, you might need to find the amount of salt, you, you might need to find the total amount of solution that there is involved. Okay, so uh, let's fill this in. So the volume of the solute, which now is specifically ethanol, um, the concentration was 13.5% uh, volume per volume. The, uh, uh, the volume of the whole bottle was uh, 750 milliliters. And here, um, I know we were converting um, uh, volume into liters the other day. Uh, here it doesn't matter because it doesn't say specifically calculate the volume in liters, okay? It's just, it's just saying just calculate the volume. So you could just leave it as milliliters, okay? So you don't have to do extra work. All right, so then we're gonna divide by 100 and see what we get here. All right, so you end up with 101.25, like that, okay? And what would the units be? Well, think of this as like 100%, right? That was the 100% that moved over, so you can think of it like the units of percentages cancel out, okay? So that just leaves you milliliters. All right, and then let's see how we're gonna round here. Uh, we have three digits here, we have three digits here, so we need three digits in our answer, so 101 milliliters, like that, okay? Okay, so we went through our graph step. This was, once we rearranged it, we went and started to solve it. Okay, and then now we're writing our final statement, okay? So therefore, the volume of ethanol is 101 milliliters, okay? <clears throat> so uh, again, all you're doing is, this is your general equation today, so if we're dealing with percentages, so like some clues in the problem have percentages, then we know, oh, okay, we gotta use the one that's multiplied by 100%. But in the end, it's, it's something to do with the solute over the solution. So in this case here, it was volume, so that's why we used a volume, volume, um, over volume uh, equation, okay? But later on, if it's uh, mass and volume, then you just uh, adjust your equation to match that. But overall, it has the same, uh, same uh, framework, okay? All right, uh, we're gonna do lots of examples here today. So um, just kind of go through them, um, try them all, because there's, there's six different types of calculations that we can learn today, okay? All right, so go through and read through it and find what's given and what's required. Here's example two. We have glucose is using um, is used to prepare uh, IV feeding solutions, intravenous feeding solutions. Um, what volume of 5% weight per volume glucose solution can be prepared using 125 grams of glucose? Okay, so anytime you see that percent weight per weight, weight uh, volume per volume, weight per volume, unit, that's the concentration right there, okay? So then you're gonna write it as C, and then because it's a weight per volume concentration, you go W slash V. Okay, and then uh, these are the units, percent weight per volume. Uh, and then from there, it's saying grams, so how much of this solution can be made if I put in um, 125 
uh, grams of glucose here. Okay, so again, here we have our solution. We know the concentration this time. Okay, we know what we dumped in. We dumped in 125 grams of glucose. Okay, so now we need to figure out, okay, well, what's the volume then? What's the volume of this whole uh, solution here? Um, okay, so there's concentration. There's the mass that you know. We need to find the volume. So here is our plan. So again, like I said, everything um, is some sort of concentration. <clears throat> uh, the solute's always at the top. The solution, the total, is at the bottom. And then you're going to multiply by 100%, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 9, or 10 to the 12. Uh, in this case here, because it's percentage, we're going to multiply by a percentage here. Okay, and then what kind of units do the solute and solution have? Well, I need to find the volume of the solution, and I have the mass of the solute. So that's what my equation would look like. It's the mass of the solute divided by the solution times 100% gets to the concentration, which ends up being weight per volume concentration uh, in this case here. Okay, so that's how you kind of build up your equation so then uh, you know how to solve it. But again, it's always the same. Concentration, solute over solution times, uh, again, this part will vary depending on if it's parts per million, billion, trillion, or percentage. Okay, so now that we have our equation here, again, uh, I recommend rearranging it. Otherwise, go ahead and plug it in and then rearrange, rearrange it after. So um, you can see that you need this bottom piece here. So what you're going to do here is um, I'm going to move this. So see how this is all a pro like it's this times this divided by this. So I'm just going to move this over here. Okay, so the volume of the solution times the uh, concentration equals the mass of the solute times 100%. Okay, all right, and then, because uh, again, we're trying to solve for volume, so now I'm going to move this over. So again, hopefully a lot of you can see that I could just switch these two around, but I'm just going to go step by step so I don't lose anybody. So I'm just solving for volume and making a formula that will work here. Okay, so now we have our mass times 100% divided by the concentration weight per volume. Okay, so again, our solute, this is our solute. That's our glucose. Remember, this is, um, that goes in the top, right? Uh, this is our concentration. Okay, and then this is our total volume, okay? All right, so let's go through and calculate that out. So the, we need the volume of the glucose solution here, okay? We're already wanting to write it specific. All right, so the mass was 125 grams, okay, and then we're multiplying by 100%, and then our concentration that we're going to divide by was 5% weight per volume, okay? All right, so um, in this case here, think of it as like the Percentage is cancelling out with the weight per volume, and then that leaves us with grams. Um, okay, so then it leaves us with 2,500 grams. So that right, right away, um, hopefully alarm bells going off, well, volume's never in grams. That's a mass unit, right? So this is where when I said before that all the different problems that you're going to look at, you're going to assume it's like water, okay? Has, okay, so assume you have the same density as water. Okay, so if it has the same density of water, that means like every one gram that you have of like water, say, is the same as one milliliter of water. So these units can be uh, equal to each other. Okay, so and in this case here, you can just convert this to milliliters like that. All right, and uh, now we have our volume. It didn't say specifically what unit, except uh, grams doesn't make sense. So, um, so yes, keep this assumption in mind. Um, so any of the solutions that we're looking at today, just assume that they are similar in density. So that means you can make this conversion of grams to milliliters like that. 
Okay, so therefore, the volume of the, not just the glucose, but the glucose solution. Okay, so that's when everything's mixed up. So be careful with your keywords here. Um, the volume of the glucose solution is 2,000. 500 milliliters and again if we're using significant digits here we're looking at one two three one two right so we have two digits so we need to change this to scientific notation okay and then we'll have two digits so I'm just gonna write that here Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we have some oxygen uh, in some uh, body of water in, in an ankle system. We have uh, 250 milliliters of water collected, uh, and we found um, once we measured it through some instruments that there was 2.2 uh, milligrams of oxygen in that water sample. So we want to find the concentration of oxygen in parts per million. Um, okay, so again, remember uh, when we have a... Um, a parts per million type calculation we need to be in mass units okay so here we're already in uh, milliliters so we want to convert this to grams okay so we're allowed to do that because we're gonna this is water actually in this case so we'll, uh, the density of water is one so we can say one every one milliliter is the same as uh, this many grams uh, here we have um, the oxygen it was measured in milligrams so we again we want to be in grams so we're going to divide by a thousand and then we get to here in grams okay so divide by a thousand okay so uh, we have everything in grams and what we need to find is the concentration in parts per million so again here's our formula so in order to find a concentration, we always measure the member of the solute over the solution. And because it's parts per million this time, we're going to multiply by a million. Okay, like that. All right, so let's um, um, modify our formula to look more like what we're using here. So the solute in this case is the oxygen, so we need the mass of the oxygen. And the uh, solution here, again, because it's parts per million, we have to use mass the mass of the water. Okay, so the mass of the sample. All right, and then we're going to times by 10 to the 6. And then our units will come out as parts per million. All right, so let's go do that. So we converted everything to grams. So there's the oxygen content, and here's the total sample of water multiplying by 10 to the 6. Okay, and then multiply by 10 to the 6 actually. Oops. And we get, oops. Eight point eight parts per million. Okay, Should check our digits here. Three, two, okay, so we can leave it as two. All right, so there's our solve step. Here's our, here's our uh, therefore statement. So again, we needed to find the concentrate of oxygen, co concentration of oxygen. So therefore, the concentration of oxygen is 8.8 .8 parts per million. Okay, so very important to remember the units today. Next example, so we have some apple juice. Uh, it has fructose in it. And it's a type of sugar, so the concentration of the fructose is uh, 12 uh, grams per mil, uh, grams per 100 mil, or 12% uh, 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 weight per volume. Um, we know the mass of the, uh, we want to find the mass of the fructose that is in a volume of 175 milliliters of this juice. Um, let's go and find the mass. So again, let's develop our formula here. So again, we uh, the concentration is built on comparing the solute to the solution. Uh, in this case here, we're dealing with um, percent. So we're going to multiply by 100. All right, uh, so now if we um, match this up to our uh, problem here, so the concentration is weight per volume. 
the mass of the solute, well, that's the fructose. And the, the solution, the whole thing was, it was a volume. It's the volume of the juice. Okay, times 100. So in this case here, it is a, a weight to vo uh, weight to volume uh, problem. Okay, all right. So let's go through. Um, actually, before we get to the solve step, um, we're seeing here that we need to find this piece here. Okay, the mass at the top. So let's rearrange the formula. So let's move the juice, the volume over here, and divide the hundred over here. So I'm just going to quickly do that. So you just, you're solving for this, okay? So that ends up being, so the concentration weight per volume is multiplied by the volume of the juice, and then you're dividing it all by 100%. Okay, all right, so let's go through now and solve it. So the mass of the fructose uh, is, okay, so the concentration is 12%. Okay, weight per volume times the uh, volume, which is 175 milliliters. Okay, and then we're dividing by 100% here. Okay, the percentages will cancel out, so we have 12 times 175 divided by 100. Okay, so we end up with 12, no, sorry, 21 milliliters. Okay, um, so again, we're looking here, we have two digits, so we'll keep it as 21. Making the assumption that um, uh, the juice it has a, a similar density to water, so you can just convert this to grams, okay? And then write it there for a statement. So therefore, the mass of fructose in the juice is 21 grams. This example here we have, um, okay, so people with diabetes need to monitor and restrict their sugar intake. Um, um, if a person can um, the sugar allowance is 9 grams. What volume of apple juice um, can they drink? Okay, um, so assume that the apple juice has a concentration of 12 grams per 100 milliliters or 12% weight per volume. Um, we need to figure out, okay, so what volume of apple juice is allowed here? Okay, so they're allowed to take in 9 grams. This is the concentration we have. So what volume of apple juice can they drink? Okay, so again, because this is a concentration type question, we are looking at the solute compared to the solution. And uh, this is a percentage unit, so we're going to use times 100%. Okay, so uh, in this case here, this concentration is weight per volume. The solute is the sugar. Okay, and then the, the, the total solution part is the volume of the juice. We're trying to figure out and we're going to multiply by 100 because we are in percentages here. Okay, so this time we need to find this value here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just move this out here, move this in here. So just a quick switch. So, um, so I'm just solving it, moving it here. Okay, so the concentration, I'll just write a C for now. So then you have the mass of the sugar. And then you still have 100% here, okay, when you move the volume of the juice out. Okay, so now we're going to move this out of here because we're trying to solve for the volume of the juice. So the mass of the sugar times 100% divided by the concentration weight per volume, okay? All right, so now that we have it solved, we can go through and calculate the volume of juice that is allowed here. So remember, the mass of sugar allowed was 9 grams. Okay, and I'm multiplying by 100%. And the concentration of the apple juice was 12%. All right, so let's go through and calculate that out. And we end up with 75. Okay, and and ends up being grams if we carry our units, the ones we were using. But remember, we can assume that everything that we're looking at today has the same density of water, so that that means anytime you see grams, you can convert it right to milliliters. All right, so therefore the volume of juice is 75 milliliters. 
Okay. Uh, an example with uh, well water. Um, so they found that there was a 0.24 parts per million concentration of dissolved iron-3 sulfate. Um, and um, they, um, I guess, yeah, they scooped out a 1.2 liter water in a kettle. Okay, so... Uh, and so they're trying to figure out, okay, well, what mass of this um, sample, uh, what mass um, is made up of iron-3 uh, sulfate? Okay, so we're, we need to figure that out. Okay, so as usual, we need to go through, and we have to compare the solute to the solution. And because we're working in parts per million, we're going to multiply by 10 to the 6 here. All right, so, um, so yeah, so this is parts per million. The solute is the mass of the iron, um, three sulfate. And the solution is the, you know, the, the kettle of water, okay? So in this case, it's volume. So, um, uh, but remember we need a, a mass, I guess, a mass of the water here, because it's parts per million. So we're just gonna make that adjustment here. Okay, so we have 1.2 uh, liters of the water, so we gotta get it to a mass, okay? So in order to get it to mass, we need to convert it to milliliters, because remember, every gram is uh, the same as one milliliter, okay? Um, so 1.2 um, times 1,000 is 1,200 milliliters, okay? And then to get it to grams, just convert it right over. Okay, so we know how many grams we have, we know the mass of, oh, and uh, we know the concentration, and we need to find the mass. So let's rearrange this equation. So I'm going to boot this over, and I'm going to also boot that over to the other side. So since this is divided, I'm going to multiply it. So here, we're going to end up with the mass of iron to sulfate here uh, by multiplying the concentration by the mass of water and then I'm going to divide by 10 to the 6 here. Okay, so just rearranging it just like in math. Alright, so uh, the concentration was 0.24 parts per million times the mass of water which is 1,200 grams all divided by 10 to the 6 parts per million. Okay, and then you can see here that the parts per million will cancel out and just leave a, a unit of grams, which is what we want. And then we get this tiny number. Oops. Okay, and that's in grams. Um, and then what are our units here? We need two decimal places, okay? So we need to keep that. And that's annoying to write, so you guys know how to write in scientific notation now. So just write it in scientific notation. Okay, so 2.9 times 10 to the negative four grams. Okay, so write a therefore statement. So therefore, the mass of iron to sulfate is 2.9 times 10 to the negative 4 grams. 